If we could please introduce ourselves, that would be great. Bridget Doherty, Communications Manager. Leslie Hervey, Clerk to the Board. Commissioner Alicia Reese, Vice President of the Board. Good afternoon, I'm County Commissioner Denise Driehaus. Jeff Lido, County Administrator. Oh, we are, uh oh, our legal is missing. So, hi, uh, Stephanie Summerall Dumas, President of the Hamilton County Board of County Commissioners. We will start out as we always do uh, with a silent prayer. And then if you can please stand after that for the Pledge of Allegiance for a moment. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Samara Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Okay, our next order of business, uh, public comments. I have one card here. Uh, Kurt Meckley? Yes, come forward, please. You have two minutes to speak. Come straight up to the podium. North Bend, you want to talk about North Bend for a minute? Okay. Welcome. Welcome, and thank you for the opportunity to speak before you today. Uh -huh. I come on behalf of KIO Ski Club, which currently list, leases the property that you will be voting upon later this afternoon uh -huh. as to whether or not the Village of Cleves is entitled to the $400,000 grant that they've requested. Um, a few comments. This project will likely create only temporary job opportunities from the various contractors used during the project. Once their work is completed, the jobs will disappear. The only potential funding that we are aware of is a $4.6 million grant request through the federal government, which it, uh, we understand is still pending. We are not aware of any funding partners nor um, if the federal funding is approved, the money must be used by the end of 2023. Depending if and when that funding occurs, this project may not even occur, uh, much less get started. What ec economic impact to the residents of, of North Bend does this project bring? We are aware of no additional revenue to the community since North Bend does not have an earnings tax and does not have any additional county sales tax portion. The residents will likely be facing an increase in their property tax to cover the maintenance and upkeep of this property. Parks generally are not money makers. As a matter of fact, the great parks of Hamilton County went to the voters last year requesting an increase in public funding to operate their parks. Has the county independently verified the value of the property to support this $400,000 request? According to the Hamilton County Auditor, the North Bend Boat Club, uh, which is property adjacent to the property in question is valued at 253,000. Yet the taxpayers of Hamilton County are being asked to pay an additional $150,000. Continue. Thank you. Sum up, please. Uh, over this project. What assurances does the Hamilton, uh, or how, what assurances does the taxpayers uh, have that North Bend will actually begin and complete this project to warrant uh, just handing over $400,000? It is our understanding that the primary goal of North Bend is to cut down the trees on the property in order for a person standing at the entrance of the tomb can see the Ohio River. What kind of view will this be when the trees are cut down, the MSD plant is visible, there are two railroad tracks running through it, and not to mention what the view would look like after the flooding, which occurs each and every year. And also in consideration of cutting down the trees, this will likely um, result in greater erosion issues because we face erosion issues each and every year. In conclusion, I ask that the North Bend grant be denied based on these comments I've made this afternoon. 
The flooding issue remain, uh, explains why the property has not been developed for the last 46 plus years. Would each of you purchase property knowing that it floods each and every year? If not, then why should the taxpayers of Hamilton County burden this payment? Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, and Mr. Meckley, did you send anything prior to today to the commission? I have submitted three various communications to okay. each and every one of you uh -huh. by uh, email, uh -huh. um, showing the first one is showing various pictures, I'm sorry, of the property uh -huh. during and after a flood. Um, I happen to have one extra copy. If you would wish me to share it with you, I'd be happy to do so. You can submit it to our, our clerk. Okay. That, would be, that would be great. Um, okay, thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. All right, uh -huh. any other questions? Thank you. Okay, um, we'll go on to uh, comments and motions. I, I just have a few items, um, let me take that off. Um, I attended the Lincoln Heights prayer breakfast um, uh, at the end of August. It was uh, very good. Lincoln Heights is making some great progress in their community and continue to do that. And they're looking looking forward. They have a, a great vision of where they want, Link, want Lincoln Heights to go. Um, and then the next day, and I'm maybe Denise, uh, Commissioner Driehaus may bring this up, but I attended the Germania Society, uh, their Oktoberfest. It was excellent. Uh, Commissioner Driehaus presented a proclamation there. And then... Um, of course, uh, the White House briefings that I have every Thursday, um, very informative, but uh, things that we've already heard about in the community and also maybe somewhat on the news. Um, and then I took a trip up to Washington um, to the White House. Uh, it was a really a good trip because they wanted to know, all three of us actually attended to talk about uh, the, the community in action and building a better Ohio and how the ARPA money has helped uh, everybody that we can think of, if we did not have the ARPA money, the federal uh, money that came through, um, I don't know what we would do through this pandemic. And I made that very clear when I was uh, up there that it was a, really a godsend uh, for Ohio. Ohio was the first state chosen to come up and talk about how the ARPA money has impacted us. And so we're very, and they picked us because we're doing great things with, with that money along with our administration. So it was a, a good visit. And then um, I wanna thank um, Vice President Reese for filling in for me for the One Ohio Recovery Foundation meeting. I had another meeting and was not able to go there. And I, I thank you for filling in for that. Um, I think lastly, I, um, oh, the Mental Health Board uh, annual meeting was uh, September the 9th, and I was a keynote speaker for that, and um, just a really good program. The Mental Health Board, of course, is doing great things, reaching a lot of people, and I was just very proud and humbled to be able to, to be the keynote speaker. Lastly, this morning, uh, Ohio Minority Supplier Development Council 2022 Supplier Diversity Exchange is the name of the conference that they had this morning. I gave opening remarks and it talks about diversity and inclusion as we look at procurement and hiring um, and what we can do. And I, of course, talked about our disparity study, which had never been done in Hamilton County before, and that how we looked at all the issues uh, surrounding procurement and what we need to do better. And, and what we are doing, we're doing some great things and talked about Robert Bill and his department and the bold list and all of that. So I was glad that I was able to uh, be a, a part of that. Uh, and you'll talk about that. As well. So that's all I have for now, uh, Vice President Reese. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> wanted to, uh, I was able to also um, join the Lincoln Heights uh, prayer breakfast uh, as well. And always good to, uh, join uh, Lincoln Heights and see what they're doing. Um, it's their annual mayor's uh, breakfast. So I was uh, happy to be invited to attend. I think all three of us also uh, attended that. Also, um, uh, as was mentioned, one Ohio meeting uh, yesterday uh, broke into committees. And uh, I know um, probably Commissioner Driehaus will speak more, but now we have committees that we've broken into to start the work. So when the money does arrive, 
uh, we'll be organized and ready to go because we'll have a short turnaround once the money comes down uh, to fight uh, this uh, epidemic as it relates to opioid overdoses and prevention. So um, I think I'm very happy with the group uh, we've put together and uh, what they're working on. Also, um, I was invited uh, on Sunday um, by Bingo Jim to uh, talk about the update on the progress of the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame and um, was able to talk at that event with a lot of people that were there and uh, was able to, uh, they get to see the drawings. They were very excited about it. Uh, former Bingo quarterback Ken Anderson and I co-hosted this and uh, he said he wants to come to the um, to the kickoff uh, unveiling. So excited about that. Uh, also, uh, I also went to the White House and joined my colleagues there. And uh, they had a delegation from Ohio, as was said earlier. Uh, one of the things I was very pleased about was when we heard what everyone was doing and they were doing some good things, but to see Hamilton County, we really stuck out. Uh, because we were able to do a lot of diversification of our funding and we were able to get the funding to the people. And so um, one of the things I emphasized uh, when I spoke was that we all can be a model for the rest of the country, particularly our 513 relief bus efforts and how we were mobile and taking the, the uh, resources and the vaccine to the people. And uh, even uh, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, who was who joined us along with Secretary Marsha Fudge, um, Joy, Con Congresswoman Joyce Beatty said, "Why don't I have this in Franklin County?" She said, "I need a bus." So they were all running to see what we're doing in Hamilton County. Uh, once again, us being a leader, um, and I, I said it all the time: Washington can release the money. And certainly was, we have to get our fair share. We pay our fair share of taxes. We need those tax dollars coming back to us and not to other areas. And when it comes in, we've got to get it to the people. Our job is to get it to the people. If it doesn't get to the people, it's almost like Washington never released the money. So I was very pleased uh, about our track record uh, when we were there in Washington. Also, um, I also attended, uh, seems so long ago since we were here, August 26th, I attended um, Princeton School District, invited us to participate, the superintendent, Tom Burton, to a Princeton day. They had elected officials from across Hamilton County in that area, and I was happy to, it was their home opener, they did win, and uh, myself and Commissioner Driehaus and a number of other local elected officials were there for that night and they had a uh, community night and introduced us. Um, and so it was great to be there. And uh, that is my niece's school, the twins, that's their new school. So they were, um, I embarrassed them again because auntie was out there and I was screaming their names. <laughs> so, but that was great to, to attend. Um, also wanted to say that I was um, happy to participate this morning, all three of us in the press conference of the uh, period equity press conference that we had uh, this morning. I know Commissioner Driehaus will talk more, uh, but it was a great press conference. And the thing that I said that I think is important, um, we ask a lot of people to participate and volunteer to be on our boards and our commissions. And a lot of times when you're on boards of commissions, you feel like I'm on here, nobody's listening to us. You give us, you give a report, it collects dust and we say, thank you for the report. Uh, that's not what this board does. When you're on these advisory groups and you bring something back, uh, you could see with our women and girls commission, when they bring something back, we're taking action on it. And this is another item, taking action and being a leader in Hamilton County on this particular issue. Um, and I also want to highlight there was some thought about, well, what is it going to cost and what is this? This is daily supplies. This is not a luxury. This is supply. Like we order toilet paper, we order soap, we order pens, pencils, paper. It's part of our supply list now. And we're heading in the right direction. So I know Commissioner Driehaus will talk a lot more about it. Uh, but I just wanted to say uh, great work to the Commission on Women and Girls. And Mary did an excellent job, along with Bridget, with the press conference that uh, we had today. Um, I think that's all that I have. Oh, lastly, uh, there were some 
uh, members of KUFA that came to our Tuesday meeting. And I know all of us have been working with KUFA on a number of issues. Um, my staff was able to meet with them in the hallway. I was able to talk with them. Um, I wanna thank Susan Blitz. I know has reached out to my office and other offices um, and all three of our offices are working on this. And I just want to reiterate that we have uh, given this information to our administrator, Jeff Ludo, and our assistant administrator, Holly Christman, and maybe um, our administrator, Jeff, could kind of give an update. I think Karen Ball is on top of it and working on a number of these issues. So I wanted to make sure that uh, that is, uh, they're giving some kind of update with that because we've got some folks that's out there on the ground looking into this. So that's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is what happens when we don't meet for a couple of weeks, right? We have a lot of stuff uh, that, that we've all been doing. So I'm not going to re reiterate all of it, but I too was in DC um, thanking the federal government for the uh, American Rescue Plan, which lent us the ability to help people in this community um, you know, uh, help them out of what the pandemic caused uh, with rent assistance and um, small business assistance and the mental health work we're doing, the housing work we're doing. So um, I thought it was really important that we be reminded that the federal government, w you know, gave us that money to disperse because we are the ones that are on the ground listening to the concerns of the constituency. Um, I did go to Germania. Um, it was fun. People had lederhosen on. It was good. Uh, my name's Dree House, so I felt right at home. Um, but we um, offered a proclamation from the county celebrating their day and uh, you know, the Germania Society and, and what they bring by way of the culture uh, to our community. Um, I was also um, at the Lincoln Heights breakfast and that always a nice event and was was glad to um, be there with the two of you. Um, I also delivered a proclamation on behalf of the commission at Overdose Awareness Day, mm -hmm. we had an event on Fountain Square um, and it's an annual event and every year we offer a uh, resolution just to remind people that we're still losing hundreds of people in this community to overdose. And we uh, have an event like that to reduce stigma and to make sure that people know that there are resources in this community. If people are struggling with addiction, um, there are many, many resources in this community to help them get into long-term recovery. Um, the period products press conference this morning was spectacular. Uh, we now have 70 dispensers in all of the county buildings that provide for free period products for our employees and also for people that visit our buildings. We are hoping that this will catch on and become a staple in other businesses and other public buildings, in schools in particular. There are many uh, girls and many women that either miss school or work because of a lack of access to period products. And so we are trying to right that wrong and make sure that the county is leading and we are leading. Uh, I think Mary Mounty said that uh, we are the only county in the state of Ohio doing this. So I'm very, very proud of the work of the Commission on Women and Girls. It was their idea. Uh, it bubbled up. We um, passed a resolution in order that we can um, make this happen. We did that collectively. And I do want to thank Mary Mounty and Bridget Darty as well for um, making sure that we are um, making sure that the community is aware of what we're doing. Um, lastly, I have a proclamation. Uh, and so I'm going to ask Leonard Watson to come forward, if you would. Um, this is a proclamation for Roger Zellers, and I'm going to—it's—it's it's fairly lengthy. I'm going to read some of these paragraphs because Roger. Um, did a lot of work in this community related to addiction uh, with Prospect House. And so uh, Leonard is here to receive the proclamation. Roger has passed away, but Leonard's gonna make sure that his family uh, receives this. So let me um, get started and read part of it. And then if you won't mind commenting to it, we would be grateful for that. Certainly. So this is a proclamation in recognition of Ro Roger Zellers. Whereas Roger Zellers was the Associate Director of the Prospect House, a men's clinical dependency treatment centered in Cincinnati, Ohio, in Price Hill. Mr. Zeller's work ethic was beyond question and his selfless dedication and willingness to take on added job responsibilities allowed the Prospect House to provide the highest quality chemical dependency treatment. Whereas during Mr. Zeller's 36 plus years of continued sobriety, he created the Black Support Group designed to assist African-American men and women to avail themselves to the 12-step recovery program. 
the Black Support Group is the longest continually operating recovery group for African Americans in the United States, spanning over 30 years. Whereas Mr. Zeller's worked with a passion of a young man in his 20s, Mr. Zeller chose the field of chemical dependency treatment counseling while he reached the pinnacle of his career and achieved all the certifications that were available. He sat on credentialing boards in Columbus and drafted the guidelines by which new chemical dependency counselors are now licensed. Whereas decency and dependability are two character traits that are highly undervalued in today's glamorized society. In times of trouble, one does not seek out the smartest, funniest, or best looking. They seek one who is decent and dependable. The one who would show up and do the right thing when they got there. That decent and reliable man was Mr. Roger Zellers. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners does recognize the significant contribution that Mr. Zellers made for the county and for Prospect House and does hereby proclaim September 15, 2022, as Roger Zeller's day in all of Hamilton County. So Mr. Watson, we would welcome comments and then we'll take a photo with you. Thank you very much. Uh, you said it all. <laughs> uh, he was an incredible man. Uh, I served on the board at Prospect House for off and on for 15 years. Uh, they did tremendous work and a lot of things that touched this county and the city and the state because Roger did credentialing for counselors who went out and all around the state uh, that actually could get credentialing uh, at three different levels. I knew him for 30 years. Um, I was very proud to be his friend and proud to have him as a mentor just for a lot of things that he taught me uh, from board development, uh, just everything. He was an incredible man. And I wanted to petition that he had an opportunity to have a pro proclamation from the county. And I really appreciate Jeff, I mean, uh, uh, Kevin, who helped uh, in your staff. He thinks he's your chief of staff and helping us to do that. And I really appreciate it. He was also recognized by the state and he's also recognized by the city. So those all just recently happened. And I just want to say, I want to thank the city and thank the state as well. Uh, Bridget Kelly's uh, staff was really helpful in helping us at the state level. And um, we did it through the city, through the mayor's office. So I want to thank you for allowing us to take up some uh, Kevin's time in order to get that done. This is what and I'm did. here because <laughs> Roger is a great guy. And I, I think that uh, everybody who knows him, which is thousands of people, really loved him and he deserves it. Thank you. And, and I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the commission, although I think I do, in saying that all three of us have signed the proclamation and we are happy to recognize his work. We're all familiar with the good work of Prospect House. And so it is our pleasure to recognize him today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would just like to comment when I spoke last week as the keynote speaker at the Mental Health Recovery and Addiction uh, Conference, everybody came up to me from Prospect House talking about Mr. Zellers and the impact that he had on them. So I feel like I know him somewhat. So yeah, they were just really um, emotional about him. So yeah. I'm glad we were able to do it. Everybody is, in, and just a side note, uh -huh. he grew up in Lincoln Heights. Oh, okay. So everybody in Lincoln Heights uh -huh. knows him. Wow. A lot of the families, the old families and, uh, I'm very happy to hear the news about Lincoln Heights. I own a security company and we protect the village building. Mm, okay, great. And the new city manager. And so I remember you when you were there. Yes, okay. But thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, did you want to say anything? Are you okay? I think we're gonna, they're gonna come down and stand on either side of you. I'm surrounded. You're going to be surrounded by the, the commissioners. Okay. Yes. So, yes, absolutely. And then if you guys want, I'll just share it. I'll take one and then I'll share it. I'll get the best one. Okay. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Wonderful. I'll share that with the staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much. Thank um, you. Uh huh, you're quite welcome. Okay, our administrator, Jeff Aluto. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioners. No by leave um, uh, agenda items today, just a couple of comments. Uh, first, um, related to the agenda today, I gave a presentation. Uh, at the CRBC Government Affairs uh, Committee meeting uh, last week and had the opportunity to talk with uh, members of, of our local business community about um, just an update on the county and some of the things that we're doing and some of the ways that we continue to um, serve as uh, partners uh, with the local community. That was one of the things that they were, in addition to the financial state of the county, wanted to know some specific questions about past uh, projects that we've done with them, then they wanted to know about some of the economic development partnerships, uh, especially as we continued the sales tax back in 2019. One of the uh, policy directives of the board was uh, for the county to be a better, more proactive uh, partner uh, with communities uh, as it relates to the development priorities that were important to them. And so this committee was asking about that as well, gave them some of the uh, some an update on some of the efforts from the past several years. Um, I just bring it up today just in terms of noting that we do have four agenda items today that are focused exactly uh, on that in terms of helping some of our communities with some of the, their most uh, critical development priorities. So just wanted to make the board aware of that conversation. Uh, secondly, uh, to Commissioner Reese's uh, question. So I did receive the email from uh, uh, your staff had passed along from CUFA. So we'll follow up on those specific concerns. I know they're highly concerned on the issue of overland flooding. I think that was one of the biggest concerns they raised. Uh, in their um, uh, in their email, um, we're meeting here shortly with uh, some of the development staff departments, uh, Karen Ball, John Nelson, others who are involved in that uh, to again to help connect the dots in terms of how we can be most helpful in preventing uh, and addressing the issue of overland flooding. Obviously, it's a enormous issue, one that's tied into um, the issue of our impervious service fee uh, analysis as well. Uh, so I think from a broader perspective, it's going to need more time on the conversation, but we'll also take a look at their concerns and see if there's some very specific things that we can help out with now. I know there were some concerns in the Evanston community. Um, I know Karen Ball is working on that as well, and we're supposed to have a report back on that today or tomorrow. So I'll keep you posted as we get that. So that concludes my comments, Commissioners. Thank you so much. Uh, we will move forward to our regular agenda. I just want to make a comment that for uh, residents that are looking or listening or whoever's in the audience that when we receive items for either the regular agenda or consent agenda items we um the commissioners read over all the information we evaluate it ourselves and also the administration looks at it and submits it to us so I, there is a thorough review on every item that is on uh, our agenda every time we uh, see it and every time that we take action so would you like to come forward Mr. Beck, our engineer. Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, I have three items for you today. Uh, the first item is uh, a report on the vacation request that the commissioners forwarded to my office for review um, on Maple Drive and Sims Township. We sent out notices to government agencies and public utilities. Uh, we got um, replies back from Hamilton County Planning and Development and Sims Township, who both objected to moving forward with this vacation. So my report to you is recommending not moving forward with the vacation. We've sent a written response to the petitioner explaining what the concerns were and if they would like to correct those with the township or planning and development, um, they can resubmit for a vacation at a later time. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to not move forward with the vacation request. Second. Commissioner Summer Jimenez. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you. Madam President. Yes. If I could just uh, briefly add some, uh, just a bit of context, just anyone watching at home, I think 
um, and engineer Beck can correct me if I'm wrong. I think there were a couple of issues with the, um, it was not something that was uh, reviewed lightly. There were some conflicts with the county's subdivision uh, regulations in terms of uh, what the vacation would do to frontage. To uh, frontage on, access, on, that's uh, correct. On, on, the, on the public street, as well as some access problems that would be created uh, from some of the properties adjacent. So these were pretty critical issues that were brought up. And some existing utilities that would be in there. So that, that was creating an issue as well. So just wanted to add some context for who may Correct. be watching. Sure. And that falls right in line with what I said earlier, that we thoroughly review everything that comes before us. So thank you for that clarity. Um, item number two. Item number two is a resolution authorizing a joint agreement between Hamilton County and Columbia Township for construction and maintenance of improvements to Walton Creek Road from Wooster Pike to Elm Street. Uh, Columbia Township was successful in obtaining a grant to do some work there uh, along with a development. So they will, uh, this will allow them to work on a county road. There is no cost to the county for this. So will allow them to do work with their funds on our road. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution uh, number two. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Dreamhouse? Yes. All right. Item number three is a resolution awarding um, the contract to lowest and best bidder, Rack and Ballauer Excavating, for the Howard Road improvements in Harrison Township. This is Project 502016. Um, the engineer's estimate was uh, $600,000. We had six bidders. Rack and Ballauer was low at uh, 564000 $465, and we recommend uh, moving forward with this contract. Um, I don't remember seeing this company before. Is this a new? They've done work for us several times in the past. It's probably been a couple years, but they have done quite a bit of roadway work for us. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution three. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreamhouse. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, item number four, MSD. Good afternoon. Welcome. Lauren DeGaricia with MSD. I have Matt Spideri with me today also with our engineering division. Uh, we have just one item on your agenda this afternoon, and that is the Sycamore Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant Thickening and Settlement Improvements Project. Uh, with this legislation, MSD is requesting authorization and appropriation of $4,701,500 in funding to construct various improvements to increase operational efficiency uh, and effectiveness of the Sycamore Creek plant's thickening and settlement systems. Uh, the Sycamore Creek plant is one of MSD's nine treatment plants. It's located on the east side of Hamilton County and treats approximately 8 million gallons of wastewater per day. Uh, this project was recommended in MSD's 2019 district-wide solids handling master plan. And generally, it will address how sewage sludge is separated from liquid waste, treated, and disposed of. The plant uses gravity thickeners to treat and thicken sludge, and this project will provide more thickening capacity and flexibility by reconfiguring configuring the system so that sludge can be wasted from either the plant's aeration basin or its secondary settling tanks. Uh, aging infrastructure will also be replaced, including four sludge withdrawal pumps uh, that transfer the thickened sludge from the gravity thickeners to storage tanks. Odors will also be mitigated uh, with the installation of a new odor control system and gravity thickener pa uh, cover panel. Uh, lastly, improvements will be made to improve the settleability of sludge in the aeration basin to allow it to move more efficiently to the gravity thickeners. Uh, this was included in the approved 20. 22 CIP. Uh, the requested construction funds are higher than indicated in the CIP. Increases are due to updating equipment, material, and labor quantities based on the 100% design. Uh, also an updated cost estimating database and equipment manufacturers do quotes. So um, of course inflation plays a part here and is a factor. Uh, we have also nominated this project for a water pollution control fund loan, so interest was added to the construction phase estimated project costs in anticipation of receiving that loan. And I can take any questions at this time. Thank you. I, I thought this was a, a bit of an increase from the, the last time, but is this the top end of the bid? In other words, we can't um, necessarily expect you guys to come back with $2 million more 
for this project because oftentimes we have projects that are listed with MSD and then they come back much higher. But it sounds like you've already included uh, the increase and in why. So um, this is a pretty stable number. You think this 4.7? Um, Matt is here and can provide more details on that. But I, I will say just generally, I mean, we are seeing this inflation and how it's sure. affecting the bids. And we're trying to factor that in as a contingency in the estimates. So I don't know. So if I'm, not necessarily, um, I'm not necessarily concerned about the increase. I understand those reasons, those variables. Sure. But I, you, you're not coming back for another 1.5 million. Or, Matt, would you like to come up? pretty stable that caused huh? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. If, if this is adopted today, our plan would be to go out to bid uh -huh. probably in the month of October next month. And we do feel this estimate, the um, about 3.9 million is from June uh -huh. of this past year. So it's, it, it's pretty recently performed or prepared. And I think we do feel that that would be a good estimate. And then we'd be putting it out for bid, like I said, probably in October. Okay. Thank you so Thanks. much. Uh, any additional questions or comments? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to adopt item four. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Treehouse. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we will move forward with our consent agenda items. Um, items five through 40. And I'll just do a brief summary on some of them that stuck out, you know, for me, um, as you know, the county, uh, we just started as a board, the community revitalization grant, another first. Um, and so the city of Norwood, uh, if, if passed, will receive $250,000 under that grant. Uh, also the village of North Bend uh, would also receive 400,000 from the revitalization grant. grant. And item nine, the Port of Greater Cincinnati Development Authority uh, for the years 2022 through 2024 uh, will receive $800,000 to enter into a development services agreement. Um, I'm gonna go down to 11. There's another community revitalization grant with Springfield Township for 500,000. Uh, item 12, Dell High Township, uh, a revitalization grant for 600,000, which we've all uh, reviewed those and looked at those and make sure we were being uh, equitable, equitable as it relates to where the monies were going and uh, that the same uh, communities or villages were not continuing to get the, the money, but to spread it out. Item 13, uh, a record storage warehouse space for Hamilton County Job and Family Services, $252, which is on Dalton Avenue. Um, then we have some replacement vehicles, uh, a Ford Escape for planning and development for 50,000. Only bring that up, even though it's not a, a, a large number, we're looking at electrical vehicles and trying to get that started. Um, item 15, oh, I already took care of that. Item 17 and 18, um, share replacement uh, vehicles, um, 23,000 for one and 28,000 for another one. And then item 19, Triton Services and the Board of County Commission on behalf of the county facilities um, on the 10th floor, some renovation project going. I think that's related to the computer system and trying to tear up that area, right? I mean, rehab. Or the, the 10th floor, I'm sorry, Madam President, the 10th floor uh, renovation is actually for the uh, the demising between the sheriff's correct the sheriff's the sheriff's IT uh -huh. area and some of the other functions that are up there community development planning and development in our new in our uh, the movement of our risk management function up to the the tenth floor. But yes, you're correct that it will segregate that from the IT from the sheriff's IT section that's okay. up there. Right. Thank you. Um, that's two hundred twenty nine thousand uh, under environmental service. That was just a question I had on that. I'll not mention that. And then we move on to item 25, uh, JFS. And I, I, it's always significant to bring up what they're spending in their budget for young, young people and also some, some adults, but over uh, 511,000 for um, JFS and their relationship with the YWCA, an agreement for child wel welfare, domestic violence service connection. Item 26, um, 2 million for um, uh, Santa Maria and the Workforce in Innovation and Opportunity Act and a comprehensive 
case management and employment program. We're really, um, this board really wants to, and we've committed through the ARPA money for workforce uh, development. And so we're really committed to that. But this is a, a JFS program. Um, Cincinnati Youth Collaborative and the School Youth Services under the wor Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, another one million. Item 28. Uh, family Services, uh, JFS, it, for the out-of-school youth services under workforce innovation again, and that's uh, almost two million. Item 29, on behalf of the JFS, um, children have options in the caring environment is a foster care service. So we're continuing, to, of course, to provide foster care. We also are um, $400,000 uh, for independent living services. And then once that's with caring environment also. And then item 31 is uh, $500,000 for additional independent living services. And I always say, um, I'm glad that we're able to place our young people and I'm just hoping one day that we will not have to continue to place them out unless they need it, of course. But we, what JFS has been doing is placing them even closer to home, which is a great thing. Uh, item 32, uh, $585,000 for residential treatment services through JFS. And then we have crisis stabilization item 33 and shelter care for $800,000 through JFS. Item 34, JFS again for substance abuse screenings, $150,000. We're working with Health Wealth Labs. Item 35, uh, a resolution approving through planning and development, approving award of Hamilton County Community Development Home Funds for Habitat for Humanity, $350,000. Item 36, resolution approving award of Hamilton County Community Development Home Funds, Homesteading and Urban Development Corporation, 300,000. Housing is very important to our board. 36 uh, is a resolution approving another award of Hamilton County Community Development Home Funds, Homesteading and Urban Development Corporation, 300,000. And item 37 is a resolution approving home funds again with Episcopal Retirement Services for $500,000. Um, I just wanted to mention we had three liquor permits. There were no objections from the sheriff department. And item 40 um, on travel, the coroner is um, requested authorization for a few of her staff to go to training. Um, and so that's the summary of our consent agenda items. I will open it up to my colleagues for any questions or concerns. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, just a couple I want to highlight. I'll start uh, from the back, I guess, and come up. Uh, the home funds, which I think is uh, great in the back. Someone had asked me, I was at a meeting, uh, what do you all do with Habitat for Humanity? Uh, they thought they were bringing me a new idea. Uh, just wanted to highlight uh, in this budget, item number 35, 350,000. I know we've done others, uh, but these um, resolutions from the Planning and Development Department, these are for affordable housing. So even though we have ARPA money for affordable housing, we also have other funds that we're putting toward affordable housing. And um, I would assume one of the things we've asked for is a mapping at one point where we could see everything we've done with affordable housing, how many units have been affected countywide. Um, and I think um, the administrator may can talk to that. I think that's something that we're working on. Uh, but I think that would be very helpful when people say, what are you doing for affordable housing? Uh, we are doing a lot. Obviously, a lot needs to be done. Uh, but we uh, are doing a lot. Uh, this is in addition to the 40, over $40 million that we're putting toward uh, ARPA money toward affordable housing. So just to today, we put uh, over a million dollars that we're going to be voting on today for affordable housing with three organizations. So I wanted to just highlight that for a moment. Um, also, I want to go back to um, the economic development fund that we talked about for communities, because we hear a lot, 
uh, some people say, hey, you, everything's downtown. Wait a minute. Uh, doesn't get a lot of press, but we uh, have a new economic development fund. It's the second uh, budget cycle, I believe, that we've done it. We expanded it. Uh, and we're hitting a lot of areas, uh, Dale, Howe, Dale High Township, Norwood, um, Village of North Bend, uh, et cetera. So I wanted to highlight those Springfield Township. I did say to our administrator, I'm very happy that Springfield Township is going to be able to redevelop that uh, property. Uh, I will have to say that I'm hurt in terms of bowling. We're losing a lot of our bowling, and that's a, a favorite pastime for people and a lot at Brentwood Bowl, a lot of bowling leagues. And uh, I could go up there and run into a lot of people, senior citizens. It was everything that had senior citizens, the little kids. And I was saying, I know it's gonna be a brewery, but it would be so great um, if it was some kind of way that it had some little bit of bowling. Cause now you see the new bowling places that have music and a little bowling and also food and uh, drink brewery. And that would be just so cool. So I'm throwing it out there, Springfield Township uh, to keep some memory of uh, Brentwood Bowl. But I'm glad that we'll be able to revitalize that. I think it's a great spot. It'll just really be a happening place. So I'm happy that we're able to help them through this new fund that we put aside to help with economic development. Um, also, I do want to um, highlight, I know we have a, a, a um, another agreement with the Port Authority. I think we do 800,000 every year. And I think there were some new things in this um, in this agreement. And I just wanted to uh, ask the administrator, there were a couple of things, some reporting items that are in there. But one thing that did jump out at me, um, and I'm hoping that we can, uh, they have a work plan, but I also wanna get back some of the things, I know they do an annual report, but they have in here that this uh, 800,000, which goes toward their operations, also helps with neighborhood revitalization. Um, of course, it has another item, and it seems like might be a new item, I'm not sure, but a real estate equity component. And I know that we're really focusing on uh, ownership, minority ownership of land, because we have a lot of minority businesses and they, you know, we have these different programs where they can go and rent. But if the rent goes up tomorrow, you almost wipe out majority of these small and minority owned businesses. But if they own the land, then that's a different situation. So I saw real estate equity in here. And I just wanted to ask the administrator uh, what new things are in here. And also, if he knows anything about the real estate equity. One of the things I do want to say, because I hear back when you, people put pictures of different businesses and say, oh, look what we've done. And I just want to say that, you know, all three of us are out, um, but a lot of people will come up to me and say, I didn't even know I was in their presentation. We haven't even closed on the property. So we're not looking for window dressing. If the property hasn't been closed on, the deal is not done, I don't expect it to see it in your PowerPoint just to add pictures of diversity. I'm only interested in what deals actually got done because some of these people were shocked to say, I'm up here telling them, oh, great, congratulations. We did a great job. And they're like, what are you talking about? We, I haven't heard back from anyone. This deal is not done. We haven't closed on this deal. So please, I know that we have pushed diversity, but we're not looking for pictures. We're looking for real deals that have been done that are positive for uh, our county. So um, with that, I, I would just say, uh, ask the administrator on those two items on this contract, are there any, I know there was some new things, some new reporting and those kind of things with the Port Authority on this. Yeah, so and I'm gonna turn it over to Mark here just in a, in a second to, to walk through the agreement in more of its totality, but um, specifically a couple of things I just wanna highlight that I think are um, right up the, in terms of where the board has been going from a policy perspective. And, and number one is um, I do wanna highlight that um, this is, as you indicated, uh, Madam Vice President, this is the port's annual operating agreement. So this is not uh, the agreement uh, for land banking activities. This is also not uh, the agreement for uh, site readiness. On the site readiness in particular, um, the port would have to come back to the county uh, to ask to present a specific site readiness project 
Um, and to the board's point from the last discussion we've had on this, make sure that they were coming forward with um, uh, with community support as well as an analysis of how this might impact surrounding property values uh, of a project that they were, that they were proposing. Uh, so we heard the board on that, wanted to make sure that was included. Um, Mark, could you walk through just the general uh, scope of, of the agreement and highlight the things that we've included from a reporting perspective and, and the core services, especially as it relates to the uh, equity, uh, the real estate equity component that uh, Commissioner Reese brought up? Happy to. Good afternoon, commissioners. So uh, walking through the agreement, section one term is three years. That compares to our previous agreement with the port. Um, what's different with this agreement is that in the previous agreement, we had set a budget for all three years of the term. In this agreement, we're going to reconfirm the budget every year. So this is a, a three-year agreement that we're entering into the port, but we're going to reassess the budget on an annual basis. And you see that in section three with the work plan. And, uh, and the budget that they need to submit related to that. Um, Commissioner Reese, you did point out that we have uh, four core services uh, enumerated in this agreement, and that is an increase from last year. It was just the, the three core services previously. Um, I don't wanna speak for the, the port, but I imagine they heard feedback here and, and elsewhere, and they've since expanded their staff. And it was actually um, their suggestion that we, we add the, the real estate equity portion into this contract. Um, Although uh, I'm sure that's going to be uh, welcome news here and, and, and the this, this staff has talked with them about that. So that is an addition. Um, and then we do talk about some additional services in section five that the site readiness grants being the primary one there. Uh, but we're also looking to potentially partner with the port on some of these community revitalization projects that, that you've spoken about. Uh, the reporting process is uh, similar to what it's been in the past. Uh, it, it has been clarified a little bit. Uh, we are going to get a, a monthly report from the port that they also provide to their board. And then staff here will kind of distill that and, and, and also pass it on to, to this board. And um, I, I'd say that covers the, the high points, but I'm happy to answer any additional questions. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, that was added to the core services. I think that uh, um, talking to uh, Jeff, I think the port, uh, if put on the right track, can be helpful to a lot of the initiatives that we as a board have put forward in terms of ownership. I do want to highlight, though, on our Exhibit A, the annual funds, because a lot of times we want to see what we have, what we're proves, what we are committing to. When they looked at their sources in 2022, Port General Fund operating budget outlined below. Public funding, county, 800,000. We are the largest contributor. Public funding, city, 700,000. Then service charges, uh, see $4 million, and it gives them operating about $6 million. Um, and then they go on to talk about their... Uh, uh, salaries and benefits, $616,300. Professional services, $93,900. And of course, rent, $18,000. Uh, staff and development, uh, $14,300 and equipment, et cetera. Totaling, even with insurance, $800,000. My point is, I know that's not their total budget, that's budget on these funds. But what I want to say is, we are taking $800,000 every year. We are the largest on this from what I'm seeing from public funds for the port. And uh, with that, I uh, wanna make sure that we got, like you said, that not only reporting, but some of the initiatives that the board has put forward that they can um, be helpful. So I'm happy to see these changes in, um, in this and uh, not just toward them, but others I see sometimes when they bring reports, they have pictures and I go back to those companies. I'm gonna go ask. And they say, I didn't even know I'm in a report. What, what picture? I ain't heard from so and so in you know months. I can't reach them. They haven't closed on it. I don't have a deal on the table. So I just want to be clear when you bring a report to me, whoever it is, I'm gonna go out there and I know these some of the people and I'm gonna ask them because I'm thinking it's a good thing. And if it's not, I'm not expecting it to be in the report. I'm expecting us to bring things that have been completed. So I think this is a um a good report. And I will put this on the table, not just for them. I was a little it was a little strange to me. I don't know. We've got our, our prosecutor's office that does all the legal, so I'm, I'm, I would assume it's legal. But I thought when I was at the state, we couldn't 
fund things, go into contracts that went beyond the budget. And we are on a yearly budget. Now, most places we go, it's a two-year budget. But we came here, we've got, not just with this, we come in with two and three and four and five years budgets. We tie the hands of whoever the next, you know, budgets in the in the future. But I guess that's legal here. I, I just know for this agreement moving forward, we are going to, to reconfirm the budget. Each year. Uh, each okay, year. great. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm glad you made those changes. I think this has strengthened it and uh, looking forward to the partnership with uh, the port moving forward. So thank you, Madam President. That's all I have. Thank you. And I'm hoping that the real estate equity, Mark, uh, will also deal with uh, the homes at the Port Authority. They bought about 100 homes from a landlord that was out of state. And so I'm sure we'll get an update at our next meeting on how that progress is going on those homes. I believe they they refer to as the care homes portfolio and we'll and, and, and they provided a lot of reporting updates on that already and they'll continue to flow to you all. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. No, that was it. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Um, I too want to highlight the community revitalization grant projects. This is the 1.5 that we had set aside in our budget for um, help with catalyzing projects in different communities. Um, as was stated, Norwood, North Bend, Springfield Township, and Delhi Township. Um, the mayor of North Bend is here, Doug Sammons. Um, I don't know if we want to hear from him. We did have a comment about the project that's being funded here. And if with your deference, I would like to hear from the mayor since you're in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Doug Sammons, mayor of the village of North Bend, uh, west side of Cincinnati. Uh, well, west side of Hamilton County, we're not in Cincinnati. But, um, <laughs> So I've been mayor for 11 years in the village. And uh, when I first became mayor, I created a beautification committee. And part of that beautification committee is we basically held a summit with Three River School District, uh, with Miami Township and various other folks, um, the Sheriff's Department. And um, we had a company kind of run the meeting for us. And what came back is what are the best assets of the village in North Bend? And most people don't realize that we are the home of two U.S. presidents. Uh, William Henry Harrison's uh, tomb is in the village of North Bend. His grandson, Benjamin Harrison, our 23rd president, was born in North Bend. And, we, and uh, John Cleese Sims was the founder. He basically, the Miami Purchase, bought the area that you guys sit in right now. The city of Cincinnati, he owned all this property and actually sold it, which then became the city of Cincinnati. But his, uh, he's entombed in the village of North Bend. Sims Township is named after him. Cleves, Ohio is named after him. So as you can see, we're very historic. In a one square mile, right? You guys cover a whole lot more than one square mile. One square mile uh, in the western part of Hamilton County is a very historic area. And um, the asset that they said was the most asset that we should be utilizing is the river, right? The Ohio River runs right along uh, North Bend, Ohio. That's how we got our name is the North Bend of the River. And um, we actually got a grant through Hamilton County initially, I think it was like seven years ago through Steve Johns, Steve still works for the county. And we had a study done by MKSK and they put the plans together as to what we could do with the riverfront if we gain control of the property. Um, and the plans have pre have, were presented uh, with this grant. I won't go into too much detail, but basically it's gonna be uh, what we envision it is, is an area where people can come uh, to not only have a park, walking paths, playground, those types of things, outdoor concerts, but also tying it in with William Henry Harrison's tomb. So if you've ever been, I know Denise comes every year when we celebrate his birthday in February. Um, when you sit up at the tomb, you're pretty high up. But when you look down, you can't, when the leaves are on the trees, you can't see the river at all. You can't see anything. So what we're trying to do is tie this in with Harrison's tomb so that when uh, people come from all around the world. We've had people from Russia or whatever come to the village of North Bend to visit a presidential tomb. And a lot of the feedback is, well, when we get here, there's really nothing else to do. So we wanted to try to uh, develop this area to not only be a park, but provide outdoor concerts, uh, maybe Friday night movies. I know that's a popular thing with families, um, but also an educational resource uh, where schools can bring their, their kids here Go visit the tomb. Uh, there's a cemetery right across the street where John Cleese Sims is buried. Um, and uh, there's Revolutionary War soldiers there. 
Most people have no idea that that cemetery is there. Um, just met with the Higher History Connection to try to revitalize that area. We also got $150,000 from the state of Ohio, who owns the property where Harrison's tomb is, to improve the tomb itself. It needs to be clean. Infrastructure needs to be done. That will be starting in the spring of next year. So as you can see, we've been a very active uh, council. Um, and so when this uh, revitalization grant came uh, available, we put, our, we put our request in, but it actually came in after Steve Shabit's office reached out to us. They now have earmarking in Congress that you can submit up to 15 opportunities in your area to submit to the Appropriations Committee. He reached out to us because I had spoken to him in the past. He originally told me to go through the Army Corps of Engineers because there was no earmarking anymore. Um, so we did that. We put a budget of about 4.67, about $4.7 million to do the earthworks, to do kind of follow the plans that MKSK put together. And uh, there was a number of people that submitted projects. We were one of the 15 that were approved by his office that was submitted to the Appropriations Committee. We have not yet heard back yet from the Appropriations Committee on whether or not it's been approved or not. But there are other sources that we will have um, that we will go after, foundations. Um, one of the council members on, on my council is Fran Walmerberg. She is the former principal at St. Ursula. Uh, she's been on my council, been on our council for a number of years. She's got access to the Mars Schott Foundation. There's other foundations. I worked at Fifth Third Bank for 22 years. There's the Jacob R. Schmindlatt Fund and various other uh, resources that would become available. But we always got the pushback is, well, if you don't own the property, you don't control the property, really, we can't give you anything because you don't own the property. So that's the purpose of us submitting for this request is not only to make it uh, make people more aware of what asset is in Hamilton County that most people don't know, uh, but then make it a destination point uh, for the west side. And we, we, we uh, butt up right against Addiston and Cleese, we're right in between both of them. Um, when you go through Sailor Park is right when you come out of the city of Cincinnati and right into Addiston. Um, and we've got about three miles on along US 50 along the river uh, that you go from Addison to North Bend to Cleves. Um, and then you're going into Whitewater Township. Um, so we're hoping to have this as an area where not only people can enjoy the park and the, and the, and the capabilities of the playground, walking mess, but also then tying it in with Harrison's tomb. There's also, uh, we've been looking at doing an interpretive center uh, where the Harrison Sims Foundation that kind of manages the site at Harrison's tomb. Um, their building is in uh, Cleese right now, but we talked about building an interpretive center to where then they could move everything there to then tie it in with Harrison's tomb. So it's, it's not just us kind of on our own doing this. We've been coordinating this with a number of people. We finally came to um, an agreement with the village of Cleese who owns the property um, that if we got this, this is what we plan on doing. Um, and so um, any questions you may have, uh, I'll be more glad to answer. Thank you so much, Mayor. Appreciate it. Okay, okay. thanks. You're on the move, sounds like. Yeah, yeah thank okay. you. Thank you uh -huh. for the information. I just want, you know, we, we get these grants. Uh, I think it's really important because, as has been said, it's a fairly new initiative from the county. We've not been in the position to do this in the past, and we are now by setting aside this 1.5. So it's good to hear what the money is going towards and what the impact is to the local communities, because that's the whole point of it. Um, so thank you for being here and thank you for letting us know about that. Um, that's all I have, Madam President. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so you have before you, I'd like to make a motion if, there's, if there is no further discussion to adopt items five through 40. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you. With no further business to come before the board. You almost got it, there, there was there was one question a little bit earlier about the development map. And just while we have the board together, I just want to say I, I, uh -huh. I think Bridget had sent something out on this, but we'll send it again. Uh, the development map showing affordable housing uh, and other economic development projects is out publicly now for people to look at so people can go to in real time and see all the different projects the county's involved in. We'll get it out to the board again this afternoon just so you have it. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Thank you.